Hey there, what is up you guys? I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my sports photography channel. For those of you joining me for the very first time, I currently serve as the Director of Content and Photography at USA Today Sports. I've been fortunate enough to have been in the industry for over 16 years. My goal for this channel is to help you become a better sports photographer. If you think that I could help you out, hit that like button and subscribe. In December 2020, I published a video titled, Do Better Cameras Take Better Photos? And my answer in that video was no. But then on January 26, 2021, Sony announced their new flagship model, the Sony A1. And so if you ask me that question again, well, my answer would be a lot more conflicted. Now, before I really dive into the meat of this video, I wanna make very, very clear that I am not sponsored by Sony or any other camera manufacturer. And the ideas and thoughts and reactions in this video are my thoughts and opinions alone and do not reflect those of my employer. With that disclaimer out of the way, what exactly is the Sony A1? Well, it is their new flagship professional camera, eventually replacing their current A9 Mark II. It features a whole host of upgrades. Most notably, it will deliver a whopping file size of 50 megapixels and doing so while shooting at 30 frames per second with no electronic viewfinder blackouts. Wait, wait, 50 megapixels? Yeah, that's right, 50. That's crazy because that's over double the current production size of the Sony A9 Mark II, while doing so at a 50% higher frame rate. And perhaps also notably for sports photographers, there are now 759 autofocus points and the system can perform 120 autofocus calculations per second, which is double that of the A9 Mark II. Eye detection has also been improved, but while not specifically related to sports, it can also track birds. So when you compare the two models, the A1 on paper, of course, is a massive, massive leap forward. And this performance advantage, again, at least on paper, is just as wide when you compare other current generation models from other manufacturers. So when I first saw the specs of this new camera, I couldn't help but wonder, how is the Sony A1 gonna change sports photography? Well, three things came to mind. The first thing that the Sony A1 is gonna do is it's gonna make it much easier for photographers to capture the action, at least when it happens right in front of them. Autofocus tech was already very impressive. And quite frankly, it's been impressive for many years now. That said, you do still currently miss shots. And while sometimes it is due to user error, other times the camera just doesn't respond quick enough. However, with the A1, you now have a processor that can handle double the number of autofocus calculations compared to the outgoing model. Couple that with improved and upgraded eye and face detect, and it sure seems that if the play happens in front of you, this camera is going to nail it. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to get my hands on one and play with it and see how it performs in the field, but at least on paper, it seems they made an already great product in the A9 Mark II even better and foolproof. Additionally, 30 frames per second is gonna make it so much easier to capture the ball in frame or get the perfect contortions and expressions in a photo. I mean, come on, heck, 30 frames per second is faster than a lot of video formats. If you've ever shot baseball or tennis, you know how incredibly difficult it is to capture bat on ball or ball on racket, even at 10, 12, 14 frames per second. 30 frames per second, however, is gonna make a world of difference. The second way that the A1 is gonna change sports photography is it's gonna allow photographers to crop much more aggressively into their frames. If you watched my earlier cropping video, you learned that you can make your photos much more impactful with a good tight crop. However, the trade-off, of course, is you're gonna have less usable pixels in your file so that you're not gonna be able to display or print your photos nearly as large. So aggressive cropping was really only a technique that you could utilize if you filled your frame pretty well to begin with. That said, a 50 megapixel file is pretty mind-boggling it's gonna allow photographers to punch in on their file even more so than they ever have been able to before, even if they haven't filled their frame all that well to begin with. Check out this sample photo from a game that I took. I was caught a little out of position on this deep pass, but with an aggressive crop, I could still pull a nice photo out of this. Now this was shot with a camera with a 16 megapixel file size, so when cropped, 
it's down to just about 2 megapixels, basically good for web only. However, if I shot this with a Sony A1, the same crop would yield an approximately 6 megapixel frame. Perfectly adequate for print. Crazy. Just crazy. Similarly, the large file sizes produced by the Sony A1 could potentially allow photographers to not need to carry such long glass to certain photo positions. Now, I'm not saying that you could go into a shoot with just a 7200 and shoot 100 yards away, or shoot an entire ball game with a 24 to 70 and crop in and all the action. You still need to use good technique to fill the frame as much as possible because cropping should be a tool and not the tool. Now, we are still in a pandemic environment and our access can be a little bit limited. We may be shooting from locations a lot further than we're used to, whether it be further back from the sidelines or even up in the stands. An improved sensor and larger file sizes could allow photographers to not have to upgrade their lenses to shoot from these further positions. For example, if you might need a 600 to shoot an outfield in baseball, you could probably get away with a 400. Or likewise, in situations where you may actually need a 400, you could get away with a 300. Some useful application of this may be the aforementioned baseball example, or perhaps shooting golf from behind a rope line. Now, the third thing that the Sony A1 will do to sports photography is it will reduce the barriers to entry. Priced at $6,500 US dollars, it's the same price as pretty much every flagship out there, even with other manufacturers. That must be like the magic price point for high-end cameras, because that seems to be the price for every new release. So 20 years from now, the new Sony will be a robot camera that you place on the field, hit start, and it's going to do everything for you. And still cost 6,500 US dollars. Okay, all jokes aside, I think at least on paper, because this seems to be such a leap forward as far as camera technology is concerned, it's going to get a lot of people to jump out there and try to upgrade their gear. And what happens when that happens is all their current gear and the current models all drop in value on the used market. So equipment sort of flows downstream. Those who are looking to get an A7 instead may get an A9. And those looking to get an R6 will now go for the 1DX Mark III, and so forth. Now I think this phenomenon does happen with every camera upgrade and new release out there. But again, I think this leap seems to be so much further, at least on paper, that it's going to get a lot more people out there to try to trade in and trade up their gear. So those are the three things that come to mind that I think will change with the introduction of the Sony A1. However, what hasn't changed? What hasn't changed is the things that you need to do in order to stand out as a photographer. Now, of course, without a doubt, the Sony A1 will make you a better sports photographer. Because let's be real, as long as you point the Sony A1 in the direction of the action, it's probably going to capture it. It's essentially making capturing action dummy proof. So while the Sony A1 will make you a better photographer, does it make you a good photographer? Nope. No, it doesn't. At the end of the day, you're still going to need good photography fundamentals. If you're fumbling around with your settings or totally out of position on a shot or oblivious to a play, I don't care how many megapixels or how many frames per second or how many autofocus calculations a camera can make, you're going to miss the shot and someone else is going to nail it. You're still going to need a general understanding of the games that you're covering and the key players participating in them. Knowing game situations will allow you to make decisions on the best possible spot to be in, where the play is most likely to go. And knowing which players are key in certain situations will also help tip you off in which way the ball may go. Finally, with camera tech leveling the playing field for everybody, you're going to have to find ways to stand out from the crowd. If your game situation allows, work different photo positions or go chase the light. Now you've heard me say it before, but I have to say it again. You don't stand out from the crowd by doing the same thing as everybody else and shooting from the same exact spot. You do it by doing something different. So all that said, let me know in the comment section down below if you plan on running out and getting a Sony A1 when it's released. And if you do, also let me know how you feel it performs in the real world. I'd be very curious to know. Thank you very much as always for watching my video today. If you enjoyed the content of the show, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget to also hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted as to when new content drops. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you all again next time. Bye now.